Good morning, American Literature students, and welcome to the Spring 2015 edition of American Literature One. I am Mr. Smith. I will be your instructor and kind of think of me as like a tour guide throughout this entire semester. I am going to take you on a journey that starts with uh, colonialism. Even before there was such a thing as the United States, we're going to go back to the Spanish conquistadors and we're going to look at William Bradford, who is a representative of uh, the Puritans and the Pilgrims, and we're going to work our way up to about the Civil War. Uh, we are going to read some primary documents, we're going to read some journals, we're going to read some uh, poetry, and we're going to read some fiction. But we're also going to look at the historical context in which these stories were written and why they were written the way they were. All right, now we are going to have to hit the ground running because one thing about this class is that we are only an A term class, and that's it. We are going to be done by about the first week of March. In fact, your final exam uh, is going to be due, I believe, on March the 4th, which means that you will be done with this class way before spring break even happens. That's good and that's bad. That's good in that uh, we are going to get this done uh, in a quick manner, and about the time we get to March the 4th, you won't have any more homework in this class, and that will be one less class to worry about unless you replace it with a B-term class. That's bad, though, in that we are going to try to get as much stuff done in eight weeks as what normal semesters would do in about 16 weeks. Um, that means we're going to be running turbo fast. And I have got you hitting the ground running already here in week one because we are going to read the works from two Spanish conquistadors. We are going to read uh, both her, uh, uh, Cortez, Hernan Cortez, and we are going to read Bartolome de la Casas, and in addition to that, we're going to read, uh, which is something we would have the second week in a normal semester, we're also going to have you read some selections from of Plymouth Plantation by William Bradford, who of course was an English, uh, he was a Puritan, um, an English uh, colonist uh, that wrote of, of Plymouth Plantation. And there you will get a, uh, an idea of what it was like writing on the Mayflower, because he's going to do that in first person. Uh, we're going to look at the first Thanksgiving and the relationships between the early colonists and the natives that were already here before they arrived. So you're basically doing two weeks worth of stuff. Now not every work because normally on the Spanish conquistadors I would already have you doing four instead of just two and usually I proceed this with the creation stories by the Native Americans which I'm going to skip this time uh, in order to do it in time. So in a compressed semester uh, we're going to be working at turbo speed. Now, here's something I do want to say. Somebody somewhere along this semester is probably going to say, Mr. Smith, I have a family, I have a job, I have all these other obligations. And to that I say, well, I hear what you're saying. And I am sympathetic to your uh, dilemma. However, you had that family and you had that job and you had that you know, church membership and you had whatever else it is prior to enrolling in this class. So I would counter your, well, gosh, I'm busy with, well, you were already busy and you purposely and voluntarily added this class to that, knowing that it was an A-term class, which we're going to try to get as much done as we can in an eight-week period. Um, I have reduced the work as much as I can, but I couldn't, you know, cut it in half like a lot of you may have wanted to do. So let me go ahead and put that out there. All right, here's what I want you to do this week. Of course, you've got the readings, um, and, you've, and we'll talk about the textbooks in a minute, and you've got the uh, uh, discussion questions that need to be answered, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. I also want you to take a minute to go through our D2L page and look at the modules that are on the left-hand side of the page, and I want you to familiar, familiarize yourself with them. Um, because it's very important that you go through this page, click all the links, and see what's available. I've tried to put as many resources on this page as I possibly could in order to help you succeed in this class. Because ultimately, that's what we both want. I want you to get an A. You want to get an A. But you've got to use the resources that I've put on the page to do it. And uh, you've also got to do other things, which we're going to talk about in a minute. One of the resources is our class syllabus. Um, since you're in a literature class, I know you're familiar with syllabi and how that works. So, look at the syllabus for this page or this class. 
uh, and read it carefully because just about all the information you need is going to be in here uh, to help you succeed. So I'm looking at the syllabus. We've got, uh, it is English 2131, Section 51, uh, Spring 2015. I am Mr. Smith. My office on campus is in the F building in 121C. Uh, there's my Darton email. You can also, if you don't want to use the Darton email, uh, the Darton email, the benefit to that is you can email me from like your Yahoo account or your Gmail account or something like that. Um, if you can't do that, you can go into D2L and use that email as well. And I check that quite frequently as well. So you will have uh, ways you can communicate with me. Also, my office hours are on here. My phone number is on here. So if I'm in my office hours um, and you call me, I will either answer the phone right away or if I'm busy with another student, I'll call you as soon as I get done with that student in order to help you. Uh, with whatever it is and the office hours are spelled out here so um, I'm usually not in the office on Fridays but Monday through Thursday you can see the hours here also in the syllabus uh, we got the specific course policies and the course data which you can do on your own time the required textbooks because this is an eight-week class I'm gonna have to insist that you already have these books because we've got to move fast and we've got to get everything done uh, you're gonna start your research paper I believe it's next week I look at the schedule here. Yes, in week two, next week, I'm going to introduce you to the research paper so that you can spend the next seven weeks working on that research paper. So it's really important that you have everything together. I am also going to post on this website, um, I, if I haven't done it already, I will, summaries of or little synopsises of everything we're going to read this semester so that you can uh, uh, decide what you want to write your research paper on. However, I probably won't do that till next week, and I'll probably put that in the research paper module, which we'll talk about when the time comes. All right. Your textbooks is a two-book set, volume A and volume B, of the Norton Anthology of, well, let's see, let me do this, the Norton Anthology of American Literature. And you can see this is volume A, which is beginnings to 1830, and then, of course, volume B uh, of the Norton Anthology, which covers 1832, about the Civil War. Okay. So again, that's the time period we're covering in this class. This is a great, great resource. You're going to get a lot of the best writings ever in American history by having these two little books. If you're an English major, you may even want to consider taking American Lit 2, and hopefully your teacher in there will also have you do uh, volumes uh, C, D, and E, which would give you some great reads as well. And even if you're not an English major, you can still put these on your bookshelf after this class is over and say, hey, look, this is what I read in college. It's, it's, it's great. Um, I also like it because it's kind of affordable. I mean, I know that I know that when you went to the bookstore and if you bought these new, you're like, <gasps> but honestly, uh, for all the great work you get in these books, they're worth the price. Um, it's not like, say, an anthropology book where you'll spend $500 and read it for one semester and be done with it um, and then sell it back to the bookstore for about $25. It's not like that. These are these are a well worth the expense. And then I've got a good college level dictionary. Also, if you uh, still have your My Blank English book from when you took English 1102, 1101, and 1102, this book is a wonderful resource. It will especially help you on the research paper, which we're going to talk about again next week. So I would highly recommend that you still keep this book. In fact, I would keep this book throughout my college career and beyond because this can have this can be a great handbook for writing great papers in any class not just English classes all right attendance I would say you've got to sign in at least twice a week and spend a little time on the website each time in order to do well in this class if you don't sign in you can't expect to do well it's just like if you were in an on-campus class you'd be expected to attend class same thing with signing into this class uh, so expect to sign in at least twice a week all right, um, the no-show period, if you're watching this video, you don't have to worry about that. Makeup work is a case-by-case -case basis. Life happens. Things happen. Uh, I had a death of my family just last semester that you know, I needed to get covered and everything. Um, so I understand that people die, pets die, children get sick, uh, your boss may make you work overtime, whatever. However, if you don't communicate with me, I can't work with you on the paper. Uh, you must have communication with me, and often you'll have to have documentation, which is listed on here as well. Things like a uh, doctor's note, uh, a jury summons, 
you know, please, please don't go to jail because you had to take class instead of going to jury duty. Uh, order to appear in court, same thing. Uh, so all of these are documents that you could scan to your computer and email to me and say, this is why I didn't sign in this week, and we can work with that. Um, if you are late and you don't have a good excuse, I start penalizing because you create extra work for me. And once something's three weeks late, it's an automatic F in the story. No discussion. Uh, unless you've made other arrangements with me to turn something in that late. If you made those arrangements, then obviously I would honor those agreements. All right, an A paper, B paper, C paper. Um, you can look at all that on your own. The evaluation, we have uh, weekly postings, which are worth 15%. We have two exams throughout. Uh, one of them that covers uh, the colonial times. Uh, the next one I think covers the founding fathers and then uh, the final exam will cover the third part. Research paper 25% so you don't want to do poorly on that. The MLA and research quizzes we will discuss uh, soon. Don't start taking those quizzes yet. I'll probably discuss those with you next week. And then of course the final exam which will be uh, the last week of the semester which is like the end of February, beginning of March. Disruptive student policy. You've got the uh, link to the catalog in the syllabus. If you uh, go into your Word document and you hold down the control key and click that link, it'll take you right there. Um, also, the academic respect. Uh, you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. If you send me an email that's full of venom and anger, you might get venom and anger back. You know, so be respectful. Plagiarism. I have zero tolerance for plagiarism. Do not cheat. Do not turn in work you've turned in in another class. Do not uh, go to Wikipedia and copy and paste anything. Don't do it. I will catch you if you do. So plagiarism, I have zero tolerance for. If you do it once, you get a zero on that assignment with no chance at a uh, makeup. If you do it twice, I will fail you for the semester until you never take a class from me again. So uh, be aware of the plagiarism policy. And then, of course, the schedule. And as you can see by looking at the schedule, uh, you are going to be working pretty hard for the next eight weeks. And again, I know that that's not ideal, but that's the nature of a half semester course. And I can't stress enough that uh, that that's the way it's going to work. All right. Your first discussion question. I want to mention that. There is in D2L a handout on what I expect these discussion postings to look like. I will, I will also, if I haven't already, email you that handout just to make darn sure you get it. I'm going to expect you on these discussion postings to spell your words properly. I want complete sentences. I want there to be a thesis, which will be the overall control. Now, it's only going to be a couple of paragraphs. You don't need to write me a book. In fact, I don't want you to write me a book. I've got a hundred something students. So two to three paragraphs will be fine. But those two to three paragraphs have to be two to three quality paragraphs. They can't be a bunch of random thoughts thrown together. They can't be anything without a thesis. They do have to answer the question, uh, whatever that is. And they have to show that you've read the work and that you have an understanding of it. And so that handout, which is already in D2L and which I will email you soon, um, actually uh, has to show college level writing. Um, if you turn in something with a whole bunch of spelling errors and missing commas and sentence fragments and stuff like that in it, uh, you expect a bad grade on it. Um, and again, look at the handout to get more information on that. All right, so I think that's about all I got left. I want us to have fun this semester. Literature is one of my favorite subjects. Um, I like the literature classes better than the composition classes. So, um, you're going to read some great stuff this semester. And I hope you will have a better understanding of American history and a better understanding of the philosophies and the ideals that our founding fathers put forth for our nation by reading some of these works that I've actually assigned to you. Because a lot of the battles that we're seeing in Congress now are between the President and Congress now. These battles were being fought 200 and something years ago. Uh, and beyond that even, while uh, this nation was very, very much in its infancy. And we're going to see uh, when people say church and state, well, what do they mean by that? Well, we're going to try to get a better idea of that. When people say, oh, but the Constitution is such a sacred document, we're going to see that not everybody was supportive of the Constitution whenever it was written. And that's where the Federalist Papers come in. 
All right, so let's have fun. Let's work hard. Let's get through these eight weeks. Let's actually learn something and let's become better writers. That's, that's, what I, that's what my vision for you is. I would love to give you an A. I, I've got 35 students in this class. I'd love to give out 35 A's. But I'm not going to give you 35 A's if you don't earn those A's. I really want you to earn these A's. So um, let's buckle up because it's going to be a pretty fast ride. Uh, Space Mountain is open. And we are going to, uh, we're going to learn a lot this semester. And I'm really looking forward to this class, and I hope you are too. So with that, uh, watch for my video again on Monday morning, and we'll take it from there.